Nice to see you, Scarlett. Rumble. Let's talk a little bit about your wheelhouse, which, of, which is, of course, tech. And I'm guessing that even if tech is not going to see as much activity, when it does, it's not going to be in the big tech space. I think we're going to see it across the board. I think we're going to see it more continue to be more difficult for the largest tech players to do really large deals. That's been proven to be a challenge here over the course of the last couple of years with the regulatory regime mm -hmm. and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, examination of those deals. But that's just the very tip top of the iceberg. We think there's going to be a lot of activity below that sort of that top 10 group. And there's a lot of liquidity on the sidelines waiting to, to, to jump into this. You've certainly seen some of those strategic acquirers come back to life even this year. And we think 2025 in particular is going to be really big for that. You say in 2025, but there's this window between now and the election and certainly when a new administration takes over where is there, you know, a sense of like we got to get it done while we can before there could be some big changes. We've seen that in the past. We This year, candidly, I've seen that less than I have in hmm. past election years. I think, frankly, most people are waiting to get past the election, and then that's when they're going to gear up. Um, there's a lot of, we think we know what a new administration would look like in either case. Um, and so I think everybody's just kind of, let's get past the ups and downs that are going to lead up to November. And then once we know kind of what we're dealing with, then that's when we go. Well, on that front, meaning the regulatory front here, I mean, in theory, it can't get any worse from a regulatory <laughs> standpoint, can it? I mean, I'm not even trying to be funny. I mean, this has been a very, very tough administration. I know they haven't had a lot of legal victories, but they certainly cast a pall, I think, over a lot of deals by making it clear there was going to be a tremendous amount of scrutiny. Right. And I think yeah. we'll continue to see that. If yeah. We have a continuation, as it yeah. were, of a similar administration. Yeah. But again, that's just at the highest of the high end of the, of the market. We've seen plenty of deals below that as the markets have slowly started to come back here in 2024. Mm -hmm. And we think that will continue to be the case. What's driving the uptick? Is this all just about interest rates and the economy? Or is there more to, to it in terms of the uh, increased amount of interest and activity? I think interest rates are certainly a part of it. Mm -hmm. So you can't ignore that. I think you have to also look at the fact that, as I mentioned before, so much capital on the sidelines right now, whether you're talking about venture capital, growth equity, private equity that has not yet been deployed, anxious to find a home. Um, and then the strategics themselves, who a year or two ago, as we were not sure, are we going to have, what kind of landing are we going to have? Is it going to be no landing, crash landing, yeah. soft landing? Yeah. They were all worried about their own businesses. It's hard to pursue M&A if you don't know what your growth rate, your profitability rate is going to be. Mm -hmm. To pick up another company and then try to figure out how to meld that in is difficult. They feel better about their own businesses now, and that's giving them a more uh, a more enhanced desire to pursue M&A. Yeah, visibility always helps. So within technology, what specific subsectors are looking most attractive in terms of takeover opportunities? Well, we're certainly, you can't talk about tech without talking about AI now, which infuses yeah. literally every aspect of tech. Um, so whether you talk about it at the semiconductor level, all the way up to the software language model level, to applications that sit on top of those, very active, and we're going to continue to see that, uh, particularly on the strategic acquirer side. Um, we also think the intersection of healthcare and technology, mm -hmm. software that helps pharm uh, pharma companies, payers, and providers do their jobs more efficiently, produce a lot of data that can then be analyzed by AI as well. That's a very active uh, arena for us and for others uh, in the space. We see a lot of work around uh, brand engagement, how they work with their consumer customers, how they engage with them, how they communicate with them. That's been a very active space for Union Square Advisors and others, and we continue to see lots of activity there. How about funding for these potential deals? How does that look right now? Um, it's a little bit... It depends on the, the what stage the company is and how much capital they need. It's been tougher to get capital over the last couple of years. We also think that's slowly unlocking. Uh, when we talk, okay, that's good. I'm curious. I do want to go back to this idea of a lot of the money that's out there and that's going to be looking for a home. Uh, what gives you the confidence that that money will be used, I guess, for investment in these strategic type of deals rather than, it, I guess, going someplace, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, somewhere safer? Um, well, one is safer typically means lower growth, yes. and these technology yeah. companies need to either sustain or enhance their growth rates. Mm. The market still pays for growth. Okay. Right? The, the yeah, analysis right. showcases that gro growth is still more important than profitability. Mm. Both are important, but growth still outweighs profitability. So if you can enhance growth, mm -hmm. then you can go after this. Safe isn't going to buy, get you that growth. Mm. And in addition to that, there are strategic needs that the large, uh, large companies have. Yeah. They need to go into new markets or at least into adjacent markets 
markets. And the buy versus build question is always going to be yeah. something that they have to assess. And oftentimes it's the buy. It's going to get you there a lot quicker than the build. Particularly with AI. But is that money, is that going into good places in terms of your view? Or is it sort of good money chasing after bad? I think we've seen a lot of, I think we're going to see a little bit of a trail of tears in mm -hmm. some parts of AI because yeah. it's just, it's so difficult right now to separate the wheat from the chaff who really has something as opposed to mm -hmm. they put a wrapper on some old technology and they're calling it AI. Yeah. We're doing a lot of work we in that. We see a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing a lot of work in that area as are the strategics. And um, so we're going to have to work on yeah. trying to flesh that out. But there is some great AI being yeah. built out there right now. Are you involved in open AI at all in terms of as an investor? No, I am not. Oh, okay. All right. Do you wish you were? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd invested in previous rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well said. Ted, always a great conversation. Ted Smith, he's a partner and the co-founder and president of Union Square Advisors.